How zeroed in are you on Starlink and Starlink's profitability? Thank you, Ed and team. So I would say overall, as we look at SpaceX valued at north of $180 billion at this point in time and has deployed 5,600 active satellites, which is just tremendous, though obviously below the signal target um, of tens of thousands of satellites that they've said that they can achieve. Overall, what we have said is that that profitability margin can increase, uh, but the money that they spend manufacturing the satellites and spending money on ground terminals has to continue decreasing. And with that being said, we know that Starlink will always be this amazing harbinger for all the missions and launches that they're doing. And we saw this week that SpaceX continues to build great momentum with some of their customers with their bandwagon test flights, and you know they are intending to send payloads to alert with, uh, all of their customers. But with Starlink, they have to really build that customer trust and momentum and continue reducing latency. Otherwise, there is a world where they do see that consumer trust uh, diminish. And what about trust of you, the people writing the checks? I'm really interested as to when you've been writing checks at the very beginning of such a business, it was all about just making the vision a reality, let alone thinking about profitability. But when we start to see the nuances, profitable territory, does it worry you when actually perhaps some of the here and the now isn't living up to those sorts of statements? I would say that overall, um, you know, there's been tremendous gains happening at SpaceX for what they've achieved in such a short period of time. Uh, we have a lot of trust in SpaceX because, you know, Elon at the helm has always been known to make boisterous statements around the nature of the profitability and growth of his companies. But the proven momentum in the trust that we have is shown by way of the various components of customers across all of SpaceX's lines of business. And with that being said, with Starlink, we have to see that they continue expanding their coverage. As we know, there's a lot of entrants coming into the space See what Amazon is doing with their Kuiper project, for example, right? Of course, on a much smaller scale, and there's going to be a lot of work done that took SpaceX quite a long time to get to the point where it is with its Starlink deployment. But overall, I would say SpaceX has such a leg up against its competition, both domestic and international, and it's really with Elon at the helm. Or indeed, it's Gwyn Shotwell as well, who's really sort of operating at this business, the SpaceX president, she had a great line on a podcast recently saying there's probably 150 rocket customers out there on the planet. And there's actually 8 billion potential customers of Starlink. What does Starlink need to do, not only in terms of revenue and profitability, but actually just ease of use and reliability to make sure that we start to see more than the current user base? So overall, they have to continue optimizing satellite positioning with that reliability. They have to improve their ground infrastructure. They have to address those technical issues promptly and be reliable with their customer service. I do say that Amazon, uh, you know, overall has had a tremendous customer service arm. And as the Kuiper project comes in as a new entrant in this space, overall, we have to see that uh, SpaceX can keep up with that reliability. And furthermore, uh, with Starlink, they have to continue expanding coverage. It involves targeting specific regions that still have satellite deployments that are necessary and marketing those app, um, efforts to potential subscribers. And we know that as Amazon continues to encroach in this space, um, they have a captive audience of potential customers, which will mean increasing competition across the board. Uh Andrea, SpaceX is a fantastic company. The Starlink technology we've just discussed endlessly and the financials are what they are. You know, they will be profitable, they won't be, and we will get humankind to Mars on Starship, maybe. But you're an investor in SpaceX, or Manhattan Venture Partners is. There's intense interest. How difficult is it to, to get hold of SpaceX and say, I want to invest in your company? What is the competition like to, to have a piece of that pie? So it's a fantastic question, Ed. I would say it's a very competitive cap table, right? The equity ledger of SpaceX and getting involved as an investor. You have to prove to be a value-add investor and be willing to stay with the company for a long duration overall. And with that being said, because of the enormous amount of capital and the billions that SpaceX has raised to date, you have to prove that if you want to be an investor in SpaceX, 
you're willing to also deploy quite a large check as a private market investor. And so with that being said, SpaceX has been quite selective and you will see that the newer investors that have joined the cap table are ones that can really weigh into the company now with a large check, be value add, and then most likely be the same investors who will anchor the company going into the IPO and then continue investing once the company goes public, if and when that happens.